Ant BMS. Has been one of my favorite BMSs for around two years now. You've got a Bluetooth app, so monitoring can be done by logging into your phone, having a look at that. Now, a little catch with this app is, for some unknown reason, for maybe the first year of using these BMSs, I, and as you probably know, I'm an iOS user solidly. I absolutely refuse to use an Android. The iOS app was absolutely perfect. You could set this up with iOS, you could configure it, you could monitor it, you could do absolutely everything. Time's gone by, I believe the Bluetooth chip that's inside this BMS has been changed. And now for whatever reason, access with iOS is somewhat difficult, let's put it like that. The, the difficulty stems from, at time of making this video, Using iOS, you won't be able to set this up, unfortunately. As I said, I refuse to use Android, so my workaround for this, I believe you can set them up with an Android device. Not, not a bit for me. What I do is I, I've downloaded the PC app for AntBMS, and I actually use a serial to TX converter to plug it into USB and set up like that. I think we'll play some footage of that being done. That's my preferred way of setting these up. Once it's set up and you've done all your configurations and settings, you can still monitor it with iOS. So when I'm out and about or if I'm testing a battery or want to see what's going on, I can do that. The app is absolutely amazing. If, it's, if it fully works for you, I mean, as I said, everything I say is at time of making this video, they could change the app tomorrow and it could be absolutely tut and not work for you. But... At time of making this video, the app allows you to see all of the cell groups, the difference between the highest group, the lowest group. You can you used to be able to <laughs> with the right. So let's just let's just presume that they get the iOS app working the way it was working when it was at its best. You could switch the charging and discharging on and off change all the settings of the BMS. I mean, let, let's be honest, your, your BMS settings, you're probably only going to want to set them once, maybe tweak them like to tune it after you've done some test rides to the power level you want. It's not a huge biggie to plug it into the computer to do that for me. So I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold anything against the Ant BMS guys. The fact that iOS app is a little bit let's say difficult at the best of times. So really good BMSs. They're configurable from 6S, no, from 7S to 20S, this model. I think they do a 7S to 16S. They also do a 24 and a 32S. So there's a range of form factors in terms of S's you can use, series connections. They are configurable as well. So even though this is a 20S, BMS, you can use the wiring diagrams provided with it to make it anything down to a 7S. I've done this in the past. I think the smallest I've run this on is a 8S pack. Don't ask why, what it was for, but I think that's the smallest that I've run it on. Another nice thing with these is that included with the BMS, let me just get this so this is a little goodie bag you get with the BMS. It in, included in this is two temperature sensors. So you've got a, a built-in temperature sensor, which is really kind of MOSFET temperatures. There's a good few MOSFETs inside that sandwich. It, they do include external temperature sensors. So you could put one kind of, you could put them two externally somewhere around the pack. There's also settings in here for these to cut the BMS off at a set temperature, so that's nice. And then also your your balance wires or your, you know, little wires that go to all the cell groups, the, the group wires, balance wires, best thing to say. It's got some level of balancing in this BMS. It's not the greatest deal. I mean, it's not like a dedicated balancer in terms of whole amps. It's not like an amp balancing rate. I think it's 200 milliamps at best. So it does have a balancing effect. It would take a good while to, to do, but it does balance your pack. Maybe an overnight thing to balance. Yeah, all in all, I really like these BMSs. Um, another thing to mention is, as well as 
coming in different sizes for the series groups and I mean I'll try and put some I'll try and get some pictures put into this video of the different form factors because the 24 and the 32s is the balance plugs go in the side and it's a larger chip and then I've, we've got a 16s here let's just have a look so this is the 16s similar form factor a little bit shorter slightly less number of these going on as well as coming in form factors of six, 7 to 16 s 7 to 20 s 7 to 24 s and so on you can also get the peak amp rating on these as well so you can get 80 a ones 120 a ones 200 a ones 300 a 400 a 500 a it's very critical that you be aware these ratings on the BMS are peak ratings not continuous ratings and it, I'm sure it is listed on the Ant BMS pages when you purchase this please be aware these are the peak ratings if you run these continuously they will get very hot and I don't know what will happen from there one of a few things could happen from there I'll leave that to your own imagination but they're good for what they're rated for peak. And to be honest with you, there are a lot of people out there, myself included, who run these a little bit beyond their peak rating and they still work. So if we have a little look at a battery pack that has the Amp BMS installed and we, we just explore the app a little bit and just show you some of the stuff I've been talking about. So what we're gonna do, we've got this stock Vector Vortex battery, courtesy of our friends at Vector E-Bike. What we're gonna do is, because this has been sat for a few months, nothing's been done to this pack, we're gonna to have to wake this BMS up. Now, awaking the BMS is done by either drawing some current or putting, it, putting some charge in there. So, I think we're gonna go for putting some charge in. If we just dial ourselves up some voltage, let's go to, it's a 72 volt pack, so let's put 84 volts into that. Right, if I just get this crocodile clip first. And the second crocodile clip. So there's three amps going in now. So, oh. Because it's got the QS8 connector in there, it's anti spark. So there's a two stage positive ring where there's an outer ring that connects to a resistor. And then there's the inner ring that connects to uh, the, the pack itself. So it was just a bit of wiggling to get to that inner ring. So now, if, I, if we boot up the app, because we're charging now, charging at three amps, we're gonna go device list. You can see a whole heap of devices, but here I see Ant BLE20S. So straight away, it gives you a run time. So this is the service time of the BMS, which is currently 895 days. How accurate that is, I don't know, but that's, as you see, it is how it is. On, we're charging at three amps on the power supply. You can see that here on this first dashboard, we've got 82.3 volts in the entire pack three amps going in that means that it's currently charging at a power level of 255 watts the highest group voltage is 4.117 volts and the lowest cell voltage is 4.104 volts the cell mean so the cell average is 4.115 volts meaning that there's a cell difference of 0 0.013 volts. So the cell difference is the different differential between the highest and the lowest, and the mean is the average. So pretty straightforward there. We've got a, so the MOSFET temperature is 28 degrees C. The average board temperature is 26 degrees, and then temperature probe one is at 24, and temperature probe two is at 25. That's that's all right considering it's 32 degrees outside. I don't know what the ambient temperature in the workshop is, but 
I'm sure it's a little bit higher than that. So yeah, it's, it's chilling in there. Looking down at this, this is the cell grouping. So you can see all of the 20 cell groups and their voltages. So happy days there. Let's just stop the charging. So, oh, in fact, let's do something fun now. Let's uh, go control and go charging off. So we just told it to, wait, we turn the charging on. Let's turn the charging off now. Straight away, power supply turns off and turn the charging back on. Power supply turns back on again. Very cool stuff. So that's one of the kind of MOSFET controls. You've got the discharge MOSFET and the charging MOSFET. You can control them individually. The curve, the cure page, which is essentially curve. This shows you like a, a graph of your voltage, your cell high, cell low, current, and then total voltage kind of plotted on a graph. So that's quite interesting. This dynamic screen, I really like this. This is like a cool little display. Showed us like a kind of dashboard style thing. You've got your SOC, which obviously is your state of charge, total voltage. I think that's your highest group voltage in that lower, below the, the total voltage there. And then, yeah, cool stuff, cool stuff. So into the settings pages, we've got battery type, which is you can set LIFEPO4 or Titan up. I don't know what that is. That's some stem crazy headway, headway, headstrong cells or something. So you can set LIFEPO4 or titanate. You've got your physical AH, initial state of charge, cell numbers, and then cycle AH. I imagine that's how many. Yeah, that's something else. So because this is the older Ant BMS, it doesn't suffer from, this is probably a year or so old, this BMS. So this doesn't suffer from any of the uh, non-iPhone issues. As you can see, everything works. You can see all the settings, the, the buttons work. It's good stuff. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed today's video, please make sure you like, subscribe, all the good stuff. And we'll see you next time for some more tech talks and some more of our usual stuff.